Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Delhi police got over 3,000 distress calls on Sunday from people panicked over riot-related rumours like violence, arson and stone pelting across the national capital. Around one-fifth of these calls on the emergency 100 and 112 numbers came from Shaheen Bagh in southeast Delhi and nearby areas in South Delhi, the official said on Monday. Panic gripped residents across the national capital on Sunday evening following false rumours of violence, but the police denied any incident and appealed for calm. Besides the PCR calls, several people from within Delhi as well as outside called up police officials, including officers, directly to verify information about violence breaking out. The rumours prompted senior police officers to come out uh, on the ground and quell the hoax calls while also taking to social media to control the panic. Delhi Metro Rail also shut its services for some time and then resumed a little while later. The police said it was uh, closely monitoring the social media accounts, spreading fake news or rumours and action will be taken against them. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyse Section 505 of the Indian Penal Code and tackling rumours. Joining me on the programme today are Jitin Jain, digital technology expert, J. Sai Deepak, advocate of the Supreme Court, Ellen Rao, former IPS officer, and Mandeep Singh Randhawa, PRO, Delhi Police. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Mr. Randhawa, let me start the program with you. Let's first try and put into perspective and try and understand what is the SOP uh, that you know that you follow when you get such kind of rumours and how difficult does it become for the police officers to deal in a situation where you get over 3,000 phone calls in a day? Uh, basically, firstly, I want to clarify that uh, these 3,000 calls uh, in a day are not uh, much number, but we got uh, approximately 1,800 uh, ca calls in two hours. That is uh, between uh, 7 to 9 uh, in the evening and there are two from uh, three or four specific areas. That is from the Western Delhi, from the Rohini and from uh, some parts of the Southeast Delhi. Then it's become a challenge for the police to tackle uh, such a huge number of calls in, uh, you know, three localities. Uh, firstly, I will uh, tell you what is the SOP. Uh, normally, these calls uh, uh, put a burden on the sources of the police to respond to these calls. And secondly, it uh, uh, basically these call of causes, uh, these type of uh, calls, it cause panic among the public. On that day itself, uh, although we were able to contain uh, the panic uh, created by these calls, our SOP is that uh, we uh, try to reach uh, the public. Uh, as much as possible through the social media, through our uh, visual uh, and audio media. On that day also, we appealed the public to remain calm. Our uh, senior officers uh, were in the control room and at the same time, our uh, senior officers, they were uh, in the field and uh, basically they were uh, trying to clarify the rumours and uh, we also make use of uh, social media as well as uh, this uh, uh, TV channels. Okay, all right. Uh, so, since we're talking about social media, Jitin Jain, let me bring you into the picture now. So, you have so much of negative messaging really on social media platforms. On the other hand, you have the police trying to put out those positive messages on social media. What's the biggest challenge when, when the authorities try to, you know, get rid of rumours and try and put those positive messages on social media? You know, I think we are trying to become uh, seasonal experts. You know, look at this uh, society. I think we are much to be blamed uh, in this very country just six months ago. And I think we did a couple of shows on your television also that majority of mainstream electronic and print media, majority of, of section of this, you know, our own very society in the liberal Delhi uh, was accusing government's proposal to monitor social media for, you know, hate speeches or, you know, false uh, 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 news or rumours during elections. And there were allegations that, you know, this government is trying to turn entire India into a surveillance state. Uh, they now want to monitor your personal activities on social media. They want to pin you down. And you, so it's a cash 22 situation for the government. If they want to, you know, uh, if there is a situation where thousands and thousands of fake videos and inciting hate uh, uh, mongering content is being put on social media, if we expect government to do something about it, obviously, first thing what they have to do is to monitor it online and dig out. So the moment government tries to do it, there is a section of society which tries to, you know, uh, bring some sort of information that, that this is a, you know, dictatorial regime which is now going to monitor your social media activities. I think now it is time for us to introspect whether we as a society are willing to see little space of our you know uh, privacy in the larger interest of national security and society second i think we all should understand that if government 
price to put a camera in your bedroom or home i agree that it is surveillance and spying but if they want to put a camera on a public road to track some criminals or to you know ensure that if somebody uh, you know does a hit and run case they are able to track him down then that is for your own safety and that, that is for the safety of public likewise if they want to monitor your personal conversations on whatsapp or personal chats on facebook that may be termed as surveillance but merely an attempt by the government to monitor open source content like your facebook walls your twitter walls or you know instagram handles where you want people to see what you are posting if if government wants to monitor that open source content for the larger national safety and you know uh, security of society i think we should desist from bringing down and you know abusing government we must support the larger objective of state in those efforts and that is the only way we can you know bring down or you know try and curb or create some sort of deterrence on this elements who are trying to create a situation using social media where life and order has become an issue now okay now this is where i'd like to bring you in as a lawyer uh, jay sai deepak firstly on this whole issue of surveillance and privacy and the state versus fundamental rights see the surprising part is the emphasis on privacy has increased hand in hand with the increased tendency of individuals to air their views on public platforms okay so that seems to be a bit of a, a mutually destructive position to some extent i'm not saying they necessarily destroy each other but if you necessarily want to say something on a public platform to let the world know of your position on a certain thing and then you expect the government to turn a blind eye to that particular content that you yourself have put out then that could be a bit of an issue second uh just to add to what mr jain has said on social media at least on some platforms like facebook you get to decide the privacy setting with respect to the kind of access that you wish to provide to something that you say on your wall so if you choose to make a certain statement public and therefore it is available for public and not just your friends to consume then necessarily that particular uh, statement or that particular position that you have taken becomes public by definition because you have chosen that particular setting so if you wish to keep something private then behave in that particular fashion and then if the government gets a back door in its collaboration with say these entities with the social media entities and then has access to something that you have deemed private then that's a different issue but even then when it comes to law and order in general the government always has the right to request these agencies and perhaps even direct and instruct them to share information which they believe is necessary if they believe that a certain post albeit private is responsible for a certain rumor mongering is responsible for incitement of hatred is responsible for let's say creating general ill will but of course uh, the one thing is the law is very clear that even when you choose to exercise your right to con- to look at this content and you wish to take action preemptively you may have to satisfy a few basic barriers which is is there a legitimate state interest obviously it is particularly if the situation is so volatile given the circumstances we live in today therefore the case for a legitimate state interest is self evident okay then the question becomes to what extent can they have access using this as the pretext or a necessary justification or a justifiable uh, let's say justification so to speak then that's a question of proportionality then how do you choose to use that particular information that is the third degree okay so i do believe that while privacy concerns are legitimate and are always warranted extraordinary situations and extraordinary circumstances by definition hand the state a legitimate constitutional excuse or a constitutional reason to invoke what is known as the police power of the state sorry to be to interrupt you here but yes. going back to the point that jitin was right, making right right again we can say that it's seasonal of course it is seasonal so uh, the situation depends or rather the situation decides the amount of power which the situation ends up giving to the state why because if the circumstance is volatile and you're looking at riots or you're looking at something else worse then effectively the situation has handed the state the necessary excuse under the law to trigger a few mechanisms to have access to your information okay therefore while it is seasonal it is necessarily seasonal because it depends on let's say the kind of situation that the, uh, the state is faced with however our position of expectation or our let's say our standard expectation with respect to privacy should necessarily also be accordingly tailored we can't expect the same degree of privacy that we have in peace time that we have at the stage of, at let's say during an extraordinary situation or during war time so to speak or when there is a riot okay so having a standard expectation of privacy regardless of what happens to the rest of the society reflects poorly on the individual because the individual is not able to put the society's interest over his interest right okay mr rao i'll just come to you in, in yeah. just a second but uh, you know mr jain put up his hand i wanted to come in and say something very quickly yes jitin jain i think frank we have a choice to make as a society whether we want our law enforcement agencies to be reactive or proactive 
if you think that they might misuse uh, you know their police powers or if you want to bring in a doctrine of proportionality if you want them to monitor social media after 48 people are killed that is one way but i i think i would you know suggest that governments or law enforcement should monitor social media throughout the you know year so that rights do not happen i think that is the choice we want to make do you want to conduct postmortems or do you want to save lives and ensure that people don't die okay all right so mr rao yeah. how difficult is it for the police to control what is happening on social media because it's an open platform anyone can put in whatever they want to there no, no it, it is in the interest of the general public that police should control the uh, social media uh, contents what they are spreading over and uh, what that in uh, keeping in view the situation where in the ground uh, look uh, recently with uh, a riot took, took place and after that the rumors uh, on the last sunday i have seen that so many rumors were there in the, so many parts of uh, our uh, city there were, people were disturbed and uh, markets were closed uh, you metro cities uh, metro stations were closed and that depends upon the situation how it is rising and so uh, this uh, uh, social media uh, um, are required to be controlled by the government keeping in view the overall peace of the uh, society and if these are not controlled and uh, no doubt there is a, uh, a privacy issue but that privacy issue as uh, rightly said by uh, uh, my uh, co fellow that that uh, that uh, privacy issue is also to be considered uh, keeping in view the overall national interest uh, of our uh, of our society and the interest of the society as well because uh, so many people have been uh, killed in this riot and uh, if such lights again erupts because of the social media uh, freedom then it will definitely be very uh, difficult and uh, controlling these uh, social media uh, um, platforms uh, for by the government it is uh, it becomes more important uh, especially in uh, in view of such situations and so uh, uh, that the privacy rules and the fundamental rights that the, and the human right um, activists saying that these have been privacy have been um, uh, um, and cross upon by the government that I don't think that it, it is uh, uh, um, uh, right thing to say uh, because uh, the police is doing whatever the police is doing that is doing within their law and uh, to control the situation and to help the people to uh, for their safety own safety and the, uh, their uh, property safety so uh, we should consider all these things that uh, keeping in view the uh, social uh, media uh, expressions of uh, the freedom of expressions as which uh, which has been given by the constitution media and with compared to that uh, what is going on adversely to the society and what uh, how the police can handle the situation and that uh, the police can perform their own duties keeping in view all these things in all together and it should be looked into totality not in uh, isolation we can see anything uh, uh, that it is a uh, uh, infringement of privacy okay all right taking the discussion forward now mr radawa uh has policing now become far more difficult with the use of technology with the use of social with the rampant use of social media or do you believe that technology gives the police also an opportunity to tackle situations in a better manner uh, you are uh, right basically uh, with the coming up of uh, these technologies especially the various uh, platforms uh, in the social media the policing is uh, no doubt uh, a bit uh, tough uh, these days but at the same time, as you rightly say, uh, this technology also provides an opportunity uh, for the police uh, to uh, investigate or uh, for the detection or investigation of uh, any crime. Uh, we are also updating our technology. And uh, one thing is very clear, whoever, use, uh, whoever is using the social media, he is basically leaving a digital print. And it's very easy for the police to work on these digital prints and uh, uh, catch the culprit. As uh, rightly said, uh, basically we are also maintaining a balance between the privacy and safety and security of the citizens and uh, uh, Delhi police is constantly up, uh, updating its uh, technology and resources to monitor these social medias. You had uh, seen in uh, these cases in last few days how we counter the social media and also we are monitoring the social media we have registered uh, uh, almost uh, more than 20 FIRs against uh, all the persons who are uh, spreading the fake news or hatred uh, messages in the social media and uh, already arrested one or two person and uh, in the coming days also we will closely monitor this uh, social media and uh, take the legal action who, uh, whoever uh, violates the law okay all right jitin jay this is where i'd like to bring you in now see the delhi police might have the wherewithal really as far as the technology is concerned to deal with situations like this 
but what about the rest of the police force and what about technology as a whole? I think uh, skilled manpower within the law enforcement agencies across India has been a challenge but I think situation is improving in the last 2-3 to three years uh, because of the concentrated efforts by the Ministry of Home Affairs. So there is there is a modernization of police which is going on and you will see that you know certain states especially like Delhi, Punjab, uh, Mumbai, Hyderabad and Kerala they are doing much better than uh, many of the other states. Uh, but you know with the digitalization of society we are uh, facing another challenge of uh, you know uh, like for example uh, 60 to 70 percent of the overall financial cyber crimes you would see are the financial crimes like OTP frauds and these crimes are like you know somebody stole 2000 rupees 5000 rupees from PTM here and there and these sort of cyber crimes are clogging the entire cyber uh, ecosystem of most of the law enforcement agencies so that is also becoming one of the challenges that you know when you have limitation of resources how do you use the op you know optimally utilize the resources in such a strain and these financial uh, crimes are happening throughout so 60 to 70 percent manpower is deployed in that and then you have these situations like riots in Delhi where it is uh, not only the citizens or some you know miscreants who are spreading uh, false propaganda uh, there is also an element of foreign hand uh, for example I think one of the hashtags which are trending in last three four days were Delhi genocide 2020 I mean look at the word which is being used genocide and if you look the majority of the handles which have been propagating them they have been all you know have the background of uh, retweeting the tweets of Pakistani inter services uh, uh, public relations agency ISPR uh, uh, the uh, infamous Asif Gafur you would know so you know the habitual pathological liar we had uh, sitting in Pakistan so majority of the content is being pushed by them now if you look at the content with that hashtag uh, 50 to 60 percent photos are from you know some random places which are not even in Delhi like Bangladesh you know some old uh, you know uh, a country like Syria and uh, you know old photos of Palestine and then you are facing a challenge of you know monitoring the society and then you are left with a choice do you want to restrict social media usage during the rights or do you want to do something where uh, you know it doesn't come to at that stage where you have to restrict social media like in you know Kashmir so I think uh, not only to prevent rights but also to ensure that we remain a free society we remain a uh, free users of social media without much of restrictions so I think uh, there is some sort of uh, you know uh, element of regulation not controlling or you know I'm saying uh, monitoring but a regulation which is required for the conduct on social media especially in the difficult situations okay all right so uh, we've spoken about technology, we've spoken about social media, let's talk about the law now. Desai Deepak, what does Section 505 of the Indian Penal Code say as far as rumours are concerned? So, I'd like to split my response in two parts. One, the relationship between law and technology is always, the technology is always going to be ahead of the law. And the law is going to play catch up. There is no running away from that at all. Okay? And even as in a situation such as a riot or let's say uh, any kind of an offence, the thief is always going to be proactive because it is, is in, it is in his interest to actually look out for his interest. And he is going to try and create a situation which changes the status quo. And the police is going to try and play catch up even there. Okay. Three, the influence of technology has been to, uh, let's say, increase percolation, reach, and most importantly, intensity as well. Okay. As a consequence of which, what has happened is the relationship between technology, privacy, and the law has been significantly altered and revolutionized in the last, let's say, 10 years or so, at the very least. And therefore, when we argue with respect to individual privacy from a conventional standpoint, without taking into account the kind of revolution that technology has brought about, good and bad, okay, then perhaps it is slightly uh, out of phase and it is out of sync with the reality. Okay, that is a fact. In fact, the Supreme Court has taken cognizance of this in this judgment of Yahoo versus Akash Chopra, where the court actually says that given that the electronic medium and the internet has such a massive reach, that was of course delivered in the context of defamation and all that but still the court realizes that compared to the print medium social media and electronic medium has a massive reach which is in several orders of magnitude better than the print medium as a consequence of which clearly there is a certain level of state interest in trying to police it a bit more but of course the general levels of policing will be different and the levels of policing when there is a situation such as a riot is obviously going to be different and that's going to be extraordinary okay so that's that's the uh, broad policy level answer. The specific question that you have put is with respect to section 505. Section 505 have three, has three parts. One is with respect to any incitement of act of let's say act of an offence against the state. Then with respect to a certain community or let's say a caste, religion, language, so on and so forth. Then is let's say an incitement of an offence against any uniformed person, which is an army member or a soldier or a member of an armed force. Okay. Then is of course one that is based on uh, incitement uh, or it's a commission of an offence at a place of worship. Okay, There is a significant overlap between section 153A which also speaks of promotion of enmity 
between communities and 505 which is why by default usually in cases involving 505 you bring in 153a which need not be the case otherwise mm. 153a need not invoke 505 but 505 typically involves 153a so what the supreme court has said in three different judgments one is of 97 the other is of 2007 the other is of 2014 is that you have to look at three uh, parts 505 largely targets what is known as hate speech and it it asks itself can you treat it as hate speech if you look at it from a reasonable person standpoint taking into account the situation in which that particular statement is made okay for us assume for a moment somebody says i believe that this particular person has this particular faith who has committed this particular offense and if you have reasonable grounds to make that particular statement that is not hate speech the law is very clear about that and the central let's say focus of 505 is intent is it your intention to cause trouble is it your intention to incite action is it your intent to actually create uh, actual trouble on the ground so these are the factors that the Supreme Court has effectively called out, which is very clear from the explanation to 505 itself, which clearly says the focus is based on whether it's a statement which is made on reasonable grounds, in good faith, and without any intent to cause trouble. If that is the case, you're out of 505. But here's where you have to ask yourself a simple question. Assume for a moment that a random news site publishes something. As a consumer of information, you're not in a position to verify that particular authenticity of the information. You don't like, but you retweet that particular information. So you are relying on a news report which has already been put out by a particular website. You believe that it's a legitimate website which puts out authentic information, you have retweeted. Can you be booked under 505 for retweeting something because you are responsible for dissemination and circulation of that particular news report, which you have genuinely believed. Then you fall back on the fact, I did not have any intent. I am merely circulating something which has been put out by a news report. Which and I thought was right. Right. Yes. And which I believe that the portal would have done its due diligence because the due diligence is the responsibility of the journalist, Correct. not the reader. The reader's job is to consume. Hmm. He cannot responsibly consume because today you have, let's say, explosion of information coming from all directions. So this particularly puts questions with respect to options available on social media, which increase dissemination of a particular piece of information. Then what do you do? Right. That is the question. Absolutely. Absolutely. Catch-22, like, yes. <laughs> like Jitin Jain had pointed out earlier as well. Yes. So Mr. Rao, do you also believe we can put an end to all of this if the public and the police work together, you know, uh, on a larger scale? Correct. Yes, definitely. The public cooperation with the police is most important aspect of the policing. Correct. If uh, for what police is there? Police is for the public, and public should cooperate with the police, and then uh, they should uh, avoid all these uh, mischief mongers, rumors. They, they as rightly said, that reader has no uh, option to verify it, whether it has been it is true or not. But at the same time, he should uh, the public man should uh, uh, think about it uh, twice while retweeting it or re-forwarding re it, uh, forwarding it. So uh, thinking that the, this um, message maybe it is true or not, but in the circumstances, given circumstances as are prevailing nowadays, or any any other circumstance is before forwarding or retweeting or sending it to someone else on the social media again he should think that this may have repercussions eh? and so so he should contain all these things and uh, as you rightly said the cooperation of police public with the police is most important and were, uh, on Sunday also. And uh, also vice seen, versa also, yeah. don't you think? Because even the police has to do its bit Definitely. really to go out to the public police, and police, ensure that they are there to, for them. Police has to reach to the public to gain conf confidence of uh, public into them. So, uh, if uh, the, the uh, public don't have any confidence uh, in the local police area, then it's uh, used that, that, that connotation of uh, police public relations is useless. So, the police is, uh, should uh, look forward and uh, they should step forward to get cooperation of public. Public definitely is ready to cooperate to the police, but subject to the police should also be uh, uh, coming forward to uh, get that uh, favor from the uh, public. Okay. And that is most important. And uh, now in, in such circumstances, also I must tell you that uh, SHO of that area, who is having interface with the all important persons in his own uh, locality and in, in, under his jurisdiction. And uh, by way of meetings, by ca calling the peace area meeting and uh, that uh, uh, Thana level coordination meetings. So the important people who are uh, being meet, vis visiting to the SHO and at the, at the time of this crisis, those people can help the uh, local area SHO, then they, they can bring the peace and calm uh, under control because people also are abiding by the uh, orders of s such important people, uh, persons who are uh, heading the society component, small components of the society and they are interacting with the uh, local police itself. Right. So right. this uh, the public <coughs> and police, if they work in tandem, 
and they definitely can uh, uh, control the situation and rightly it was done. I appreciate the efforts of Delhi police on last Sunday evening when the rumours were separated so many places in, in Delhi and it was brought under control. I talked to the additional DCP, additional CP of that West District also and then uh, they, they said it's all under control sure. and on so many other TV channels I spoke on uh, that's a phono then I also appeal to the people that uh, there's nothing going on. Don't believe in the rumours right. and be very wise to uh, Accept what is being circulated on, on social media. Okay. Yes, yes, I think you want to say. So I think uh, Sir made a very important point. Just as you have an expectation as a, of, of privacy as an individual, the thing is when it comes to social media, they make it easy for you to circulate uh, information. So it has actually generated a certain trigger happy behavior on our part where instant forwards happen without even looking or without even consuming. Half the time, I don't think people even go through what they're forwarding. Yes. They simply just forward it merely because they see a certain face on the thumb, uh, thumbnail or whatever it is. So that trigger happy mentality is something which the individual needs to curb before he exp before he decides to impose his notions of privacy entirely at, at society's uh, uh, expense, so to speak. Sure. So I do believe that while there is an expectation of privacy on the part of the individual, there is a significant amount of duty that comes with a particular expectation, which is to behave responsibly. If you believe that a certain piece of information is apocryphal, is unreliable and does not have credibility, Think twice before you circulate it, even if it supports a certain opinion that you think is right. Okay, all right. I've got very limited time on the program. Two minutes left. I'm going to get closing comments from all my panelists with the best way forward. Just starting first, first just, with you, Mr. Randava. Hi, just I will. I, I would like to submit uh, at all. Uh, firstly, the uh, police public relation. Uh, this is the prime uh, important. And Delhi Police has uh, basically given the various platforms like we have the Aman Committee meetings, we activated our Aman Committee meetings, we have the Police Mitras mm -hmm. and uh, in the social media we have the Twitter account, we have uh, available on the Facebook, we have uh, uh, Delhi Police traffic Twitter crown, uh, account and uh, we are also having uh, uh, active interaction with the people at large and this helped us to clarify the rumours in last uh, uh, this uh, last Sunday. Uh, which was appreciated by each and everyone. And another thing I want to just uh, through your uh, program want to appeal to all the residents of Delhi that uh, whenever uh, they are uh, retweeting or just forwarding the uh, message in the WhatsApp, uh, uh, WhatsApp or any other social uh, media platform, they, uh, they must verify, verify whether it's true or false. And Delhi Police uh, recently has uh, yesterday itself given the advertisement and we released 50 additional numbers of all the district control rooms from which any fact can be verified. Okay, all right. That's a fantastic initiative. I think that should be used more and more by the public. Jitin Jain, closing comments? You know, I think there was a, a study conducted by Harvard University last year and they found so they had put certain contents on online uh, platforms uh, and it, uh, major, some of them were fake, some of them were real and they found that fake contents had 80 times more chances of going viral than the real content. <laughs> People like the fake news. They feel it is, you know, juicy because of an inquisitive nature and they, 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 you know, forward it. If you send a real content or a clarification or they, you bust a fake news, people don't forward. So I think that is the bigger problem in society that we are habitual to send fake content uh, and make it go viral. We are consumers of fake news is what you are suggesting. Yeah, that's, something that WhatsApp yeah, that, yeah. that's something that needs to change. Mr. Rao? Yes, deterrent action against the rumor, uh, rumor um, uh, spreading people by the police is most important and that will have a far reaching effect on the so that nobody else should think about it to uh, spread the rumors right. and particularly uh, the people should uh, forward or re-forward and retweet it after thinking twice that whether what, what will have is far reaching effect of that. Okay, okay. all right. And Jay Saidipa, close the show for us with your concluding remarks. A light travels the world by the time the truth has had an opportunity to try its shoes. So <laughs> that's effectively how it works. This, and that's always been human nature, I think. But I do believe uh, that society has a significant role to play in such situations when they realize that uh, technology empowers and it cuts both ways. Therefore, they play a significant role in dissemination of any kind of rumors. So, as I said, an expectation of privacy must go hand in hand with a clear realization of responsibility on your sure. part. That you shouldn't con uh, contribute to the worsening of the situation. All that right. is equally important. Like a very famous TV dialogue goes, with great power comes great responsibility yes, as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that note, we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time. <laughs>